But the Jesus of the earliest four Gospels looks a little different from that. They present a much more grounded, down-to-earth, relatable Jesus. According to the Gospel of Luke, Jesus didn't begin teaching or preaching until he was 30 years old. In fact, according to the first Gospel ever written, the Gospel of Mark, we see that when Jesus started teaching and preaching, those who knew him well were surprised and caught off guard because they knew him as a regular guy with a regular family and a regular job. Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? So, rather than present a picture of a lofty, untouchable religious icon, this earliest gospel shows a regular man with a family. He was someone's son, someone's brother. More than that, the people of his town were surprised to be taught by someone who spent his days performing grueling, back-breaking work. You see, most English Bibles use the word carpenter to describe Jesus' profession. But the Gospels were originally written in Greek, and the Greek word used here that is oftentimes translated as carpenter is tekton. And the word tekton is used to describe manual labor, primarily with stone, metal, and wood. So, before Jesus was anything else, the Gospels describe him as a regular man, a tekton, a construction worker. New York is one of the greatest cities in the world. But it didn't get this way all by itself. All of the amazing buildings and structures in this city, they were all conceived by brilliant minds born of incredible ingenuity, but they were built by the hands of construction workers. They're who built this city. Even with all of its art and culture and commerce, at its heart, I think of New York as a blue-collar city, built by blue-collar people. And first and foremost, that's who the Jesus of the Gospels was, a blue-collar guy. This is the city of Sepphoris, and almost certainly, Jesus would have worked on building this city. You see, in the beginning of the first century, Sepphoris was the capital of Galilee. And right around the time Jesus was born, Romans set fire to the city. Sepphoris was about three miles from Nazareth, the village where Jesus grew up. So, for a young man from Nazareth, working his trade as a builder or construction worker, living so close to a city undergoing major reconstruction, this would be the place to go find work. Excavations have revealed a city that is very well preserved, looking much as it would have in the first century. And it's safe to assume that some of these very stones would have been placed and hewn and touched by Jesus himself. In walking through downtown Manhattan, I came across these guys. Carpenters Union, uh, we're 118. Their union represents just about any kind of construction or building work you can imagine. From dock builders, timbermen, scaffold, uh, sheetrock framing, woodwork, uh, computer flooring, ceilings. They were there in protest for a labor dispute because a company based in that building had labor practices that they felt were damaging to the quality of life for all construction workers in New York that wants to exploit their workers and pay them very low, under area standards wages and no benefits, yeah. and we're against that. Yeah. Basically, they felt that the rich and powerful were exploiting their workers. And in talking to Jerry and Anthony, there was no mistaking the passion for what they do, for what all working class, blue collar New Yorkers do. We work hard for our money, it's a noble cause, noble trade, the laborers, the elevated people, the, the uh, plumbers, the electricians, this is all honorable trades. The, the, you know, uh, it's blood, sweat, and tears that goes into building these projects. In listening to them talk about their craft, one thing was very clear. These guys care about what they do. They're proud of it, and they know how important it is to this city. It's interesting to think that this is the same kind of work that Jesus did. Yet, as vital as their work is, I have a hard time imagining someone like Jerry or Anthony suddenly deciding to quit their job and roam the streets of the city saying things like, deny yourselves and follow me, like Jesus did. How would a construction worker go about starting one of the largest movements in the history of the world?
So, in this earliest written gospel, we see a Jesus that is rejected in his hometown because up until this point in his life, he had seemingly done nothing to make those who grew up with him think that he was anything other than a regular guy, a builder. Yet, what this regular builder aspired to do is unbelievable, to rebuild the whole world. 